Welcome to video two for week four. In this video, I'm going to go over the spherical coordinate system and do a couple of integration examples. I've talked about the system before in previous courses, but let me remind you how it works. The spherical coordinate system is a system in R3 that defines a point by which sphere it is on. So if I have a point in R3, each point lies on some sphere of some radius. So R, in this case, is the distance out from the origin. This is unlike the R in cylindrical coordinates, which was the distance out from the z-axis, which was the radius in the xy plane. This is just the distance of the point to the origin, regardless of whether the point is close or far away from the z-axis. So that defines a sphere, the radius term. And then a point on a particular sphere is defined by two angles. And these are very much like latitude and longitude for conventional descriptions of the globe. They're set up slightly differently though. So first, the longitude equivalent is still sort of the angle in the xy plane. So if I look at the xy plane underneath here, um, and I drop this down, I have some angle in the xy plane. It's going to start at the positive x-axis. It's going to go counterclockwise, going to count from 0 to 2 pi. And these are going to give me lines of longitude going around this sphere starting at the positive x-axis and going counterclockwise. So it, is, it really is longitude. I will refer to it as longitude. It just starts at the positive x-axis instead of wherever you want to locate the Greenwich Meridian. And instead of counting positive and negative from that, east or west, we're going to count all the way from 0 to 2 pi in radians going counterclockwise in longitude from the positive x-axis. Now let me redraw the sphere and talk about the other term. The other term is going to be latitude, or at least something close to latitude. Um, what I'm going to take here is called co-latitude. Latitude in the globe is measured from the equator. Co-latitude is measured from the North Pole. So co-latitude zero is going to be the North Pole. And then the latitude is essentially going to be an angle going down from the North Pole. Um, we can go further as we get here. And then if we go a half circle all the way around, we end at the South Pole. Um, longitude gets to go all the way around the circle. Co-latitude only gets to go halfway around the circle. So we only need to go from the top to the bottom. If you do a bunch of trigonometry with those set up, you will get these particular equations for the change of variables in terms of phi, the co-latitude, and theta, the longitude and are, of course, the radius of the sphere that you're on. You can recover x, y, and z using trigonometry from those two angles. I'm not going to do the full inverse transformation, but the one we actually care about is recognizing radius term. So the radius is the distance from a point to the origin, so in Cartesian coordinates, that distance is given by this Pythagorean combination of square root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Since I'm doing integration, I'm going to need the Jacobian. Again, I have three outputs and three inputs. Outputs x, y, and z, inputs r, phi, and theta. So here are all nine of the partial derivatives. I put all nine of the partial derivatives into a three by three matrix, take its determinant, determinant, and the Jacobian here is r squared sine phi. Notice this Jacobian has units of length squared. That makes sense because our differential is going to be dr, d phi, d theta. It has two angles in it, so it only has a unit of length. So having two more units of length means we're actually getting, gonna get units of length cubed for a little differential piece of volume, which is good. So the fact that I have units of length squared in the Jacobian corrects for the fact that I have two angles in the infinitesimals. As I did with cylindrical coordinates, I'd like to know what happens for constant loci. So when r is equal to a constant, that fixes a sphere. And that's where the name of the coordinate system comes from. That's what it's all based on. So r equals c is going to be all points that are a fixed distance from the origin. That's going to be exactly a sphere of radius c. Longitude equals a constant is exactly the same as the half planes that I had for cylindrical coordinates. So if the longitude equals a constant, the longitude is an angle in the xy plane. So if I fix an angle in the xy plane, then what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the half plane out from the z-axis of all points that have that longitude on a variety of spheres, on small spheres or large spheres. Latitude is a bit trickier, but let me try and draw this for you as well. So if I have a fixed latitude, that means I have a fixed angle down from the North Pole. The radius can vary, so I can be on a large sphere or a small sphere. 
On any sphere, a fixed latitude is going to be a line of latitude. And as that sphere gets smaller or larger, I'm going to get smaller and larger circles for this line of latitude. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a cone. So a fixed latitude is a cone. If that latitude is less than pi over 2, so if I'm still in the top half of the sphere, it's an upward cone. If that latitude is larger than pi over 2, then I'm going to get a downward facing cone. And there's a special case if the latitude is exactly at pi over 2, then I don't get a cone, then I get exactly the xy plane. So that's the equator of any sphere of any radius. All of those equators are going to be on the xy plane. So hopefully those constant loci, again, give you a sense of what this sort of looks like as a coordinate system. I want to do a couple of examples. The first thing I want to do is the volume of the sphere. This is an integral we've talked about a couple of times before, but now it is so much nicer than it's ever been before. So if S is a sphere of radius capital R, to find volume I integrate the constant 1. How do I describe a sphere? Well, it has any longitude, and longitude goes from 0 to 2 pi. It has any latitude, and latitude goes from 0 to pi. And a solid sphere, I have any radius from the origin out to the radius r that bounds this sphere. I have my Jacobian term, I have radius, I have latitude, co-latitude, and I have longitude. This is entirely separable, so I can split it all up. There's the theta integral, there's the phi integral, and there's the radius integral. The theta integral gives me 2 pi. The phi integral gives me negative cosine of phi evaluated on its bounds. There's the radius integral, r squared becomes r cubed over 3. I evaluate all that, I get the conventional 4 thirds pi r cubed volume of a sphere. And I didn't have to do any trig substitutions, I didn't have to do any square roots. The calculation here, all the only antiderivatives I had to do were sine and r squared, both of which are really immediate antiderivatives. So this is really a very, very nice integral to calculate something that was much more difficult to calculate in previous systems. The last example I want to do here is quite a complicated one. So I want to take a sphere of radius r centered at 0, 0, r. So this is a sphere that's going to sit on top of the x-axis, so no longer centered at the origin. So this is a sphere here. And I want to take a cone with a vertex at the origin with flare angle pi over 6. So that's the angle from the center of the cone out to the edge. So that's going to be some kind of cone like this. And I want to think of the intersection with this of the cone with the sphere. So this first part is going to be a cone here where the cone and the sphere intersect. And then I'm going to get a cap on this cone of this piece of the sphere above that. And what I'm going to get is sort of like an ice cream cone shape. So I have this cone here, and I have a little hemispherical type cap on the top of this. And I'd like to know the volume of that object. This, I'm going to call it D. It's the intersection, the portion of the sphere that lies within that cone and has sort of these two regions. So the sphere is centered at 0, 0, R. So the equation is the normal equation of a sphere shifted up in the z-coordinate. If I expand this binomial, cancel off the r-squared terms, I get this. And if I change this into spherical coordinates, the equation of this offset sphere in spherical coordinates is little r, the radius is equal to 2 capital R, which is fixed, cos phi. And I can use that as a bound for doing an integral. And what I can think of this as is, again, if I think of the xy plane here, this thing thinking, sitting above the xy plane, my radius term r is going to go out from the xy plane to the edge of this sphere. This is going to be that edge. So my radius term is going to go from 0 all the way out to 2r cos phi. And I get that by taking the equation of this offset sphere, writing it in Cartesian coordinates, changing that equation into spherical coordinates. I've skipped a little bit of algebra between here, but it's only a couple of steps. Then my longitude is going to be all the way around. If I try and sort of draw this thing one last time, remember this is sort of a cone shape here um, that's solid, and then I have this sort of cap from the top of the sphere. So this is completely, uh, has a still completely circular cross section if I look at a horizontal cross section. So my longitude, I'm still going to go all the way around with my longitude. But my latitude is, my co-latitude is quite fixed. It starts here, and the co-latitude is this angle down here going down from the z-axis. It has to stop at the flare angle of the cone. 
because any co-latitude that is down here is going to be outside that cone, so the co-latitude has to stop at pi over 6. Flare angle of the cone is exactly this angle down from the vertical to the edge of the cone. All right, that gives me bounds. I want volumes. I just need to integrate. So I take those bounds that I calculated before. I take the Jacobian, and then I set up an integral. As before, I'm going to not belabor the steps of the integral. They're all here and in the notes for your consideration. Um, this integral has phi in the bounds for r, so the r integral has to be inside the phi integral. The theta integral is separable, so I can pull it out by itself, but the other two I have to do in order. Other than that, this is just some relatively basic integration. And I get a result of 7 pi r cubed over 12, and that's a reasonable number. It's less than the whole sphere, which is 4 thirds. 7 twelfths is a lot less than 4 thirds. That sort of makes sense. And this is a nice thing when we're doing volume calculations to always ask ourselves, do these answers make sense? I think this is pretty good. This seems like a reasonable answer for this strange ice cream cone shaped object that I wanted the volume of.